Hi folks and welcome to this brand new episode of CNB right here on the NDTV network. Karun Chandok is with me which is clue enough for you that it is time for the 2015 awards jury meet. We are back at the BIC. Karun, thank you for being back with us. Thank you. Always happy to be here. It's great to have you back and I can tell you that there's lots of other jury members. It's not just the two of us. We're all raring to go because of course it's going to be a special day. Now it started out being a little murky. In fact more than that. It was really fogged out over here. But Things have cleared up. You can see it's not so cold anymore as well. And uh, it should be a good day. No, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I think we've got a great range of cars, as usual. Um, it gets better every year. Yeah, so. and also, I think, um, across all segments, you know, we've got a lot of excitement in the small car segment this year as well, haven't we? Yeah, and in fact, a little bit of, uh, I won't say necessarily game-changing kind of stuff, but it's nice to see a departure and not just the same old every year, you know? More of the same? No, this year we've got something new, so. Yeah, I think you'll have your work cut out for you, that's for sure. Yeah, you've given me a, a massive range of cars, so um, I feel I should be sending you a bill for today. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's on camera, which is dangerous. But uh, no, the point though about just the widespread and the fact that we are on the track. I mean, very often for the viewers, it gets confused with the fact that, you know, we're just trying to push these cars. But this is more about just having a controlled environment. Absolutely. I think uh, the point is we want to test it in an environment where we can do what we want in terms of testing. Yeah. But we're not here to drive fast and do lap times. You know, we're here to we're here to evaluate cars in normal driving conditions. So very often, I mean, when I drive the cars, I don't often go over 60 or 70 kilometers per hour because that's not what you would do, you know, on the public roads. And sometimes you would take an unconventional line for a racetrack, but it kind of replicates the angular corners that you'd see in a city, yeah. for example, you know, yeah. or on Delhi roads or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's the point of being here. Um, we've got a fantastic facility around us. Absolutely. And, and, that's and uh, to use. Yeah, and not to say that we won't drive fast, we'll do a little bit of that too. Yeah. And this track lets us do that. So, uh, the Booth International Circuit, it's a fantastic track, it's a great place for us to be. It's time to kick off the 2015 awards, right here. For 10 years, the NDTV Car and Bike Awards have stood out as credible, fair and trend-setting. This year, the story will be no different and our powerhouse CNB Awards jury continues to be rich in experience and diversity. Renowned international motor journalist Jens Miners joins us for the second time on the jury. Jens also serves as director on the steering committee of the World Car Awards. Jens's global perspective and knowledge is again a big bonus to the jury this year. Joining us for the first time on the four-wheeler and two-wheeler jury this year is Pablo Chatterjee, managing editor of Man's World and also a seasoned motoring journalist. And if you're looking for real driving experience on the jury, look no further than India's youngest Formula One driver and now Formula E racer Karun Chandok. Second time on the CNB Award jury this year, Karun's experience and his technical know-how will be invaluable to the jury. Also joining in for the second time is Dhruv Behel, founder and managing editor of AutoX. Dhruv has been passionately following the automotive space for many years now and will bring his own perspective to the jury this year. Internationally acclaimed automobile designer Dilip Chhabria is on the jury this year. DC's rich understanding of the auto industry and products is of immense value. One of India's brightest young racers, Aditya Patel, also returns to the jury this year. Aditya's motorsport experience, coupled with his technical knowledge, will sure add more insight. Actor, auto enthusiast and biker, Gul Panag is now a regular juror with CNB for five years. 
she has also become a familiar face in the motoring world. Dr. V. Sumantran, who has been with us since the very first year of the awards and brings to the jury lots of industry experience and knowledge. And finally, our very own Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, editor Auto NDTV Group and director World Car Awards, who drives all the automobile programming on the network. The dense fog on the track meant a slightly delayed start. But once the sun came up, our jurors and the nominees were eager to have a fun day on the racing track. After all, this was the Booth International Circuit in Greater Noida playing host to the jury meet for the fourth straight year. A short briefing to the jury by Siddharth sets the tone for the day, which is going to be serious jury work, but also lots of fun as always. Also, a quick briefing by the race control team at the circuit follows and then the jurors get going. Yes, of course, the nominees for Performance Car of the Year, the Mercedes-Benz AMGs, BMW Ms and the Audi RS7 sure got their fair share of attention, especially with Karun and Aditya setting the pace, but other segments like the subcompact sedans, the Accent and Zest also had many outings on the track. The jurors also spent quite some time with the entry hatches and the SUVs. So the three of us have literally taken a pit stop. We've stepped inside because it's very noisy with everybody buzzing around the track outside. And uh, thought I'll quickly catch up with my two co-jurors from the World Car Awards. So it's, it's nice, of course, uh, Jens, to have you back and Dhruv, you as well, back on the jury. Um, this whole point about you know, the association with the World Car Awards, it means a lot to us here at CNB because We've also changed our scoring method to sort of conform with that. Do you think it makes it more comprehensive? Yeah, I mean, I've always found uh, the scoring method to be pretty comprehensive. I like the fact that it's collaborative as well. Uh, so there's conversation and it's collaborative. You guys are World Cup veterans, so uh, you'll have to fill me in on the World Cup front. And maybe this is uh, a good way to sort of preempt that too. But it, it, does, it does help to have that sort of an association. Um, I think so, and we're proud to be associated with you actually, and we can learn a lot from uh, how you do things and how you present your awards. Um, incredibly professional, and uh, we do it on a global scale with uh, a New York Auto Show, um, but I, I just like the way the, this um, testing event is set up, and uh, the conversation among jurors, it's uh, exemplary. Uh, the point about uh, being uniquely Indian, you know, I mean, you have Earlier, that used to sometimes mean cheap. It doesn't anymore. I mean, now you do have a fair amount of value kicking in, fair amount of engineering kicking in as well. I mean, the subcompact space, that's exciting, promising yeah. as well for the future. I mean, also, I think what's exciting in the market today is the fact that if you look at the various variants that are on sale of most models, uh, you'll find that it's the models at the higher end of the scale that are more. doing the best, that are selling more. So really, that's what's going to drive supply and that's what's going to drive manufacturers. Uh, so if there's demand, there will be supply. And, and, and it's the same thing for safety as well. I mean, if there's demand from consumers uh, for a safer product, uh, then hopefully you'll see the manufacturers. Well, that's where uh, awareness really kicks in, and that's what we are trying to do. We're trying yeah. to push that message. But even even these little clever solutions, like you know the the auto gear shift from Maruti Suzuki, yes, people right. thought automatic is not for them in India because it's expensive and it's fuel inefficient. But this comes in with a very different uh, sort of a product and it suddenly works things really are changing. Well. It's an impressive yeah. technology uh, or the, an impressive application of a relatively simple uh, technology. And I, I know uh, AMTs for a long time, of course, um, in, in Europe and um, you mean, you've basically leapfrogged uh, the competition in, in some way here. Uh, Maruti has done a really nice uh, job of application. Yeah. I also, another point is I like the design solutions you have. Um, you have interesting crossovers. Last year we had the Ford EcoSport and uh, this year we have the Fiat Aventura. Uh, not an entirely impressive car, but I like the style. And um, it's a nice segment. It's an interesting segment. And it, it's, going yes. to go, it's only going to grow. We know this. There's yeah. a Hyundai coming. There's a Maruti coming. Yeah. So it's only going to grow. There's another car <laughs> that I found really interesting. It's the Mahindra Scorpio. My expectations were um, zero. I expected uh, very little from that car. But it's reached a level of refinement that is incredible. So they've done a marvelous job. Um, you couldn't tell by the design, but it's a really nice car. And that, yeah, you couldn't tell from the design that yeah. it's all new, but it is all new. <laughs> That's the other thing that yes. a lot of consumers keep talking about as well. But anyway, it's great to have you here. And of course, uh, we've still got the ceremony. I know you're skipping out on us, but Jens, it's great. You're going to be with yep. us at the ceremony. So the results, that's what's uh, the next thing to look forward to. Of course, 
a little bit more driving as well for the rest of the day. Thanks, guys. Let's do it. So that's what we're going to do. Continue to enjoy ourselves for the rest of the day, but it is time for a very short break here. Please join us on the other side. Welcome back to CNB. We've got our jury special on, as you know, and uh, well, his dad's on our bike jury this year, and uh, we've got Aditya Patel, who's with us on the car jury. Third time, of course, Aditya. It's good so, to be back. Yeah, and it's been first, second, and third time, lucky for us. So thank you. Um, I'm glad you think it's good to be back. And the, the good thing, you know, a lot of times people sort of mistake why we are looking for a racer to come on to the jury. Now, of course, there's a, there's a certain core skill and an expertise you bring into it, but, but it's more than just that, isn't it, for you? Yeah, for, I guess uh, for me, yes, of course, driving is one aspect of it. That's the whole core of it. But then uh, Karun and I, for example, we like to look at a car as a whole, right? And not only do we, we never really get to drive these cars normally. So having the track as an environment, not only are we driving it fast, okay, we can drive it fast, but we also have the option to drive it slow. So that way we get to, you know, experience a car from... Everything really. We get to drive it slow, we drive it in the pit lane, we drive it in the back, we stop, we start, we test the brakes, we test the acceleration, we test in gear acceleration. So that way we get to test everything, I guess, without somebody coming in the way. Without the worry of traffic. Without the worry of traffic. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> crazy drivers. Crazy right? drivers. Well, maybe we have some crazy drivers, but they're not always on the track together. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but make no mistake of the fact that, of course, uh, these guys are the quickest. They are also the ones who do go the fastest. And uh, sometimes for the rest of us, that's also a good thing because you want to sometimes say, all right, here's a car that, you know, is designed for this kind of performance. Show us what it can do. And, and that's where it does help to have you around as well. So the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, I guess when it comes to cars at a certain level or beyond a certain level, then they're not only designed for going fast or luxury, but they're also designed to handle well. So I guess that's where we, we have come into use for you guys. So we can actually take these cars around the corner at a certain limit, push it beyond a certain mm. limit, see whether it's really good or it's not really good. But then again, most cars are designed to handle well these days. Nobody wants to compromise on handling, be it right from the Tata Zest to something like an Audi RS7. Everybody wants to, you know, push their car to the best possible limit. Also, the tolerance for our environment, our fuel types. Mm. I mean, earlier these cars were very like, you know, touch me not. I mean, take mm. it out at your own peril. Yeah. Now with so many models, um, the workshops are getting better. Do you think that's yeah. again a good thing? Yeah, for sure, it's a good thing. I think uh, at least it gives people the opportunity to, you know, venture into cars like this yeah. without having to worry yeah. so much. Well, some people. I mean, they're some still, people. of course, prohibitively expensive cars. Yeah. That hopefully will change if you know more and more of these cars start to sell, then you know prices yeah. may come down. But mm. that's not, of course, what this conversation is about. Uh, last point: um, anything in particular that was a surprise to you? I mean, something that you that you perhaps had a lower expectation of and it turned out better or the other way around? I had a couple of cars, one being the Zest, the Tata Zest, yes of course. <laughs> um, we are used to the Tata Indica I guess and we spend a lot of time sitting in a Tata Indica. But when you get into something like this, you can't imagine it's really come out of the same manufacturer. It's so a, it a huge, huge leap. leap. Yeah. And then the Tata, and then the Mahindra, the Scorpio. We're used to the Scorpio Sorry, being said, the way yeah. it is, yeah. And uh, then when I drove it around the track, I was surprised. I wasn't afraid of it rolling over. I was rather afraid that I'm going to spin around. And because I think they've lowered the center of gravity yeah. a bit, quite a bit. So it handles much better. The feedback from the steering is better. Everything about the car just feels like I'm in another car. So but you are. I mean, it's a different generation. It's a different generation. I just said that, that, you know, <laughs> don't be fooled by its looks. It actually is a different yeah. generation and not just a facelift. Exactly. So, uh, but it's good to see that. It's good to see mm. products just getting better. Yeah, definitely. And, in, and, and we, we see, see that, that every year. We see that every year. And this year, I think there's been a huge leap. With Which is the very, very The good Elite news. I-20 also, I thought, was quite a big leap. Uh, so, yeah, it's good. So, benchmarks keep going up. That's great for all of you, of course. And it is great for us because it means that uh, the standards that we are judging on continue to improve, continue to go. The bar goes higher every year, which is always a good thing. Once off the track, the jurors also spend time taking a closer look at the styling, space and interiors of the nominees. And like every year, there is a Design of the Year award categories for both two-wheelers and four-wheelers. Of course, when you've got Dilip here with us, I will pick his brains about uh, the design that we have on offer this year. Uh, it was the F-Type last year that got a lot of discussion. Of course, that was a convertible. This year, we have the coupe. But 
what we've been seeing from Mercedes-Benz as a brand, you know, really aggressive sort of designs, mm. very different kind of a, a coupe-like silhouette uh, to the sedans. The C-Class has it, the CLA has it. What do you make of all of that? Well, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. So uh, I think it attracts a younger buyer and that's, that was their conscious uh, strategy and mm. I think to that extent it's worked. Uh, however, will it date faster? I think so. So where one would expect that usual restrained German Teutonic uh, uh, you know, sensitivity, somewhere I think they have done that. Mm. Um, to me, uh, I think they could have been adventurous the way they have gone, but somewhere they've gone a little overboard. Held back a little, a little bit. Oh, yeah. They should have restrained themselves. Now, the new generation Mini, we have the five-door and the three-door. The fact that they've even done a five-door, I mean, the Mini was never supposed to be that. Yeah. So it's a stretched Mini, yeah. and even the three-door is bigger than the last car. Yeah. Are, they, are they also pushing a point, you think? Yeah, I think globally the percentiles are getting larger. The users are getting larger, and, and obviously, uh, you know, Mini is a success story in the US, so uh, you have to remember uh, these days, the U.S. and China are the key markets for car makers on the drawing boards. So from that point of view, yeah, I think they will get larger and larger. But a five-door Mini, that is not, it's, not what, <laughs> it's an oxymoron in that yeah. sense. Uh, also, you know, it's lost that, uh, it's lost the, that proportion and the desirability and must-have uh, kind of uh, factor. Well, it's still fairly recent uh, as far as its introduction, even globally. So we'll have to wait and see how it does. Uh, no, but final. But, but I think you know they're trying to uh, uh, trying to cater to each and every Different. segment. I yeah. think I think that's the risk because they need to stand clearly apart, differentiated. Uh, maybe the pressures on growth and all that must be so high that they have to probably compete keep, in each segment. Keep doing something yeah. new. Um, all right, so standouts for you. I mean, this is from a design perspective, uh, there's been so much talk about the S-Class, the C-Class, and of course some of the cars we've discussed. You've got the AMG lineup as well. And then we've even got things like the Fiat Aventura, uh, where you know people are trying to do different things in different segments. And yeah. lastly, the sub-four-meter sedans. You know, right. They've started to get better proportion. Yes. You got the accent and the and, and the Tata Zest this year. Overall, standouts for you. Standouts for me, two clear two clear winners. The BMW M6, I think, is a gorgeously proportioned car. It's got their edginess. Uh, you can't fault the lines really, and the i20. Okay. These are the two clear standouts for me. Okay, performance car. Uh, sports car of the year, of course, we only have one option and we are going with it. You don't like the M6? I like the M6, so it's just not as balanced as the M4. Family ride that we took. If you take Maruti, Hyundai and Honda out of the market, the market's in very bad losses. What can you possibly do? After all the driving was done on both days, the two juries got into hectic discussions and deliberations before voting in each category. It's just these three car makers who are keeping the overall number looking good. Okay, now number nine. In the interest of transparency, we have no editorially decided awards for any segment or category, and so the jury weighs in on all our awards that are up for grabs. The voting takes into account not just an overall impression of each product, but also how it fares on seven parameters. Safety, value for money, environment, performance and handling, emotional appeal, relevance to its own segment, and finally, any merits or USP. 20,000 units, which is why they're in there. That way, it's a comprehensive and well thought out decision for each and every juror on each and every product or category. There is a secret ballot post the discussion to decide the winners, and all of this has been monitored and tabulated by our knowledge partner, Ernst & Young. Right, so a good busy day has come to an end and yeah. uh, we've been out here for quite a while. I think it turned out to be good weather-wise too. Yeah, yeah, it hung on, um, you know, and like um, we had a bit of rain, I think, earlier this week. So it's been, it's been fun and I think uh, we've all learned a lot. Uh, few things were unexpected, few things were as we expected, I think, um, as the day went along. But no, it's been a lot of fun. There are surprises the car makers yeah. throw at us, good and bad. Yeah, and, and also, actually, when you have a day like today, I think when you have lots of cars in a row, you kind of say, well, if they had this engine from this car and that chassis from that car, and you kind of put it together and you kind of say, well, you know, even within the same manufacturer, you know, it's like if they had the previous generation's gearbox mated with this, it would feel a lot easier. To, you know, 
you learn a lot of things which, um, you know, perhaps even manufacturers can take away from a day like today. Well, it's the 10th edition of the awards. I think uh, we've done well with the kind of products we've had. Good jury meet as well. Yeah. Uh, the results, that's what all of you will want to see. And uh, we still don't know what the results are as such. So yeah. it's well, good. I know what my votes are. So. As do I mine. <laughs> but then we'll wait for the final results, of course. And next week, don't forget the bikes. There's lots of bikes this year. So we do have the bike jury meet that you can get a glimpse of next week. And also a little behind the scenes on what's happening here at the BIC with the awards. Definitely tune in for that. Wear your seatbelts, wear your helmets. And Karun, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll of course see you at the award ceremony. Absolutely.